Hi, I'm Gaitalyn Condi, and it is the week of 4th of July here in the U.S., and so you will likely hear fireworks behind this uh, recording because there's a lot going on outside this whole week. Um, we are diving into the first five chapters of Acts this week, and it's all about the apostles learning this post resurrection ministry that they are called to. And there's some amazing miraculous events that happen here that are also um, prophesied to be part of the precursors to the second coming. So it's worth our study and discussion. The book of the books of Acts are written by Luke. And um, as we've discussed before, it, it depends on the author that also dictates the the version of some stories that we get in the details and the emphasis because of the audience that they tended to write towards. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15, 5, it says Christ appeared to about 500 men. And I think that's important because as Christ um, commands the apostles through the Holy Ghost, he is alive after his passion, they say. And many... Um, infallible proofs are given. And I love that phrase. Um, they are baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I think baptism has a two part that we don't always talk about. It's not just the water. It's, it's baptism by the Holy Ghost as well. And the apostles are called to be witnesses. What was it like for them for these 40 days as Christ stayed with them and ministered to them? And Christ is, um, prophesying that Israel will not yet be restored. And I think that's interesting because many of those that didn't believe he was the savior, it was because they were looking for a savior politically, um, uh, geographically, and um, that was still not going to happen. And I think it's interesting to note that he made sure they they knew of this in Acts verses Acts one verses nine through fourteen. Christ ascends to heaven, and it is said that he will return in the way that he departed in a cloud. And they were all in one accord. With one accord is the phrase that is used. And they prayed. They were in the upper room of the temple, and they were with women too. And I think it's so wonderful to see how much women are noted in the New Testament in these in these last few months as we have studied. I think it's so important that we emphasize that, teach that to our children, um, and show the the one one accord with one accord included men and women. What is with one accord? Agreement, unity, and all together. And I think when men and women are in one accord, it's much more powerful. The work that can be done, the impressions, the teachings, the service, all that we do it as we do it together with one accord is better. Um, there's a new apostle picked, and it's interesting to note that it's kind of by elimination. Um, Matthias is chosen, and um, Judas has died. Now, um, in, in some of the verses and chapters and, and accounts of Judas's death, it's by hanging of um, suicide. And in this Acts version right here, verses 15 through 26, it talks about um, how he hung and his um, bowels burst open. And some people have felt that's a contradiction, that was he beaten or how was he killed? Did he really take his own life? And so as I've researched this, and I don't want to get too gruesome, but I think this is one of those times where we can be investigators of the scriptures, that if someone is hung and they hung the, hang themselves, that as they hang there, the, their bowels will burst for, forth. And um, I think that is not necessarily a contradiction in accounts of how Judas died. Um, as we go into Acts 2, it's the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost is as a rushing wind. And I love this. There is a specific note of all the different nationalities that are there. 18 different languages, the diversity of Jerusalem. I think that's important because the Holy Ghost becomes a translator. I know that as I have done um, speaking over the last few years, um, it's beautiful to be a part of that experience when the Holy Ghost is very personal. Even if everyone in the room is speaking the same language, the Holy Ghost translates to specifically what the listeners need to hear. And the gift of tongues, I think, is very much that. The Holy Ghost is a great translator. And in our own tongue, we will be able to speak powerfully through him. 
um, they were there were some that were amazed by what they saw the apostles doing and by many a people doing. Um, men were dreaming dreams, women were prophesying, um, handmaidens, all of these things were were testified of but some people also thought are you guys drunk what's going on here because the day of pentecost was this mighty experience joseph smith history um verse 41 says that some some of this will still yet to be fulfilled so that all that is coming and all that peter says has happened in joel peter quotes joel in verses 14 through 21 that is still yet to come as well so much of what we see is is a pattern of the savior coming and leaving and so it would make sense that when he comes again many of those same things would happen um as we move forward here i love verse 26 in acts 2 where it says my flesh will rest in hope isn't that wonderful to think about our flesh resting in hope and peter teaches about how people can be dis, um, be saved. Peter is testifying that, and their hearts become open and they're finally ready to change. They're saying, what should we do now? He's saying, you need to be baptized. You need to repent. And I think it's important to note that the Holy Ghost was doing his work too. You know, it's the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost had been promised. Um, Christ had said that he would be crucified. He would resurrect. He would be exalted. He promised the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is a God of this world that is testifying and teaching. And so I, I can't say, share this without emphasizing that the Holy Ghost and Peter together were helping their hearts be open. 3,000 people are baptized. That's a mighty miracle. And they were taught to live in all things common, which is living um, the united order. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in Acts 4. But we are living the law of consecration today. Oftentimes we say we're not. Everything that we have is God's. And we've consecrated it, especially if you're endowed to building up the kingdom. We may not be living all things in common, which is that we turn everything into the bishop and then we receive back what we need, um, which is what they were doing. They were selling everything and then turning it over to the apostles. Peter and... Um, Peter and uh, who else? Peter and John, I believe, are, yes, Peter and John heal the lame man who is a known beggar by outside the temple as we go into Acts 3. And he's in his 40s. And, and so it's a pretty mighty miracle to see this healing happen. 120 disciples and apostles are there. They're standing in amazement. They're praising God. And they see of these healings and they teach uh, in the power of Christ. And Peter is saying this over and over again to the Sanhedrin. All these miracles you're seeing, everything that's happening, because now the Sanhedrin's freaking out. They thought they've won because Christ has been crucified. And Peter is going to consistently and in bold ways testify, no, Christ is resurrected. And all these miracles you're seeing are in his name. His power is still on earth today. And Peter pulled boldly testifies of this that you couldn't you can kill the savior but you didn't kill his work and he is resurrected um verse 20 in acts 3 is about the restoration time that we know has happened in verse 23 i think is a warning about murmuring against the prophets are we willing to follow a prophet today no matter how hard it is and and that this law of moses has been fulfilled and the abrahamic covenant is intact and christ is a, is a is the gateway and the fulfillment of all of this as we moved into acts 4 i think it's important to note that the jewish leaders want to arrest and charge peter and john and um excuse that pounding my husband is uh hanging some speakers up <laughs> um this these mighty miracles are happening but so is great opposition and I am brought to mind as we read the story of Aeneas and Sapphira, the husband and wife who sell everything, but they keep a little behind and they keep this portion behind and they don't tell the truth. And they're asked about it. The husband is asked about it without the wife. He drops dead immediately and is buried, which is interesting. The wife comes back. Where's my husband? They ask her, have you given us everything like you have covenanted to do? she drops dead and is buried. And so my question to you is, are you, what are you holding back? What portion are you holding back? I love that Peter and John are locked in prison and an angel frees them. And I believe the power of Christ frees us from our prisons. And I hope that you feel of this as you study the first five books of 